Hi guys, I'm back. I was in a period of silence. I'm sure you recognize that. Um, I'm back for a little bit and then I believe we're going to go back into our chambers for a little while also, okay? So I haven't been communicating on a personal level if you've been trying to reach me and thank you for understanding that. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with uh, the solar eclipse and then we're going to go back to my last video, okay? And I'm going to tell you where we are on the timeline. Um, I've got a new calendar to show you, so it's very exciting what I am seeing. Okay, so the solar eclipse on the 8th. Um, I have two videos on the solar eclipse. If you'd like to go and watch those on my channel, just search solar eclipse and you should have two videos come up. So the understanding that I have about the solar eclipse is that, um, well, it, it's the conception, okay? Conception, immaculate conception. And that was when the spirit of the Lord overshadowed Mary. This is how she conceived. The spirit of the Lord overshadowed Mary, right? This is what the Bible states. So we had the moon cross over the sun. What it also was is a uh, crack in the lattice and um, three days of darkness, which is misunderstanding. This was a great grace for us, a great blessing. The solar, solar eclipse was a great blessing. Um, in my videos about the solar eclipse, I talk about the diaphragm. Your diaphragm, of course, ladies, is the opening to your womb, basically. And this is where you have conceived. Diaphragm, though, is also a contraceptive. Uh, meaning against conception, against thought. Um, so there, there is great misunderstanding in what happened, but then there's also great immaculate conceptions about what is happening. Um, shall a nation be born in a day? Yes, the nation is now going to be born in a day. It, it's a sh very short period of time that the nation is going to be born. What it was, the solar eclipse had the attention of so many people, not only in the United States, but all over the planet. And this was a focused attention on God's natural ways. This is a great grace for us because people were in awe and in wonder of something that occurs fairly regularly in the natural order of things, but people were appreciating God's natural order in that there is a great grace. It, as you guys have seen, I'm sure all over the internet, it was passing over um, several cities named Nineveh or something like that. And this was the sign of Jonah. Yes, it was. And what what that means is that God has repented. God has repented in a big way uh, regarding judgment. So what we then had three days later was the cross. Um, the 11th was the cross. And the cross is the the public marketplace. Okay, the public marketplace. This is the marketplace. This is literally when um, Mercury was getting his morning star in exact conjunction with the sun as he's retrograding. There's the marketplace. It says 410 on it, but we were at 411, okay? And of course, a month after 311 is the 411. This is where Jesus goes to the cross. This was the void, the zero point. 
Okay. All of these dates, you guys, occur over a period of a few days, a week. It, it, this is an ongoing energy. So what we had was our crucifixion. And what that means is that we went to trial. This was the judgment. This was the Passover of God's eye. And it was the judgment and the firstborn died. The judgment happens in a public place. It, Jesus going to uh, Pilate, okay, and before the, the Jewish Sanhedrin, and he was convicted. And then he went to the cross. The firstborn died because it was the Passover, just like in the Old Testament also, and it was three days of darkness. What that, that it, that's huge. This is obviously, hello, this is huge. It was us going to the cross. We say that we wanted to follow Jesus. We had to go to the cross. Um, it, it is time then, the next stage is our resurrection. And I'm going to talk all about that. But I, I have my notes, you guys, and I want to make sure that I don't um, forget anything for you. The cross is our point of departure. So... Okay, guys, we had a crack in the lattice. What your point of departure is, is your mother. Okay, this is your complete rebirth. Please go look up the word neos in Greek. It's under the word new wine. It's under the word new. This is the beginning here of our regeneration and of our rebirth. We are not going to be birthed from the old matrix. We are coming out of a new matrix, which means mother. Mother is dam, D-A-M, as in mad dam. You guys, mad, the, literally, it's... It is the definition of the word dam is the word mother, okay? I believe it's a Hebrew word. Okay, so what's going to happen is the dam is about to break. We've had a crack. We've had a rupture in the lattice, uh, the window of heaven. And the, at the birth, the dam is going to burst, okay? Okay. Um, I want to show. I want to show you. I'm going to show you the other four corners. It's the four corners. It is looking down for, on the top of the pyramid. So this is Vitruvian man coming out of the period. It's squaring the circle, circling the square. It's the four corners. The four corners come together and they form the cross, guys. So Jesus went into the tomb on the 11th. He is going to rise out of the tomb, which is the womb, and that's our point of departure. Departure, this is, it's your mother. It's a new mother, and it's because, like, postpartum, postpartum, guys. The word departure means to part the waters <laughs> is to give birth, okay? So you're, what happened is that your water broke. There was a little crack. Your, I'm sorry for the language here, guys. You're leaking. The water's leaking. You know that the nation is about to be born in a day. Okay, it is very soon upon us that the levee is going to burst, meaning the dam is going to break, and here come the flood waters. And this, to you, is a beautiful thing. And this is because I'm hoping that you have gotten into the ark. Okay. 
Next, next, what happened um, in this last week was also everything's being told in the stars, you guys, and that is God's time clock. And so everything is being told up there completely perfectly. Um, at the solar eclipse, exactly conjunct with the sun and moon was Chiron. And Chiron is our centaur. Remember that the centaur is the one that we thought was coming at the lunar eclipse um, with his bow and arrow. It's a love dart, but it's a fiery dart also. So the centaur was right there at the lunar eclipse. We have many, many videos about the lunar eclipse starting way back in May of 2021. And it was, this is the centaur's seed. The centaur's seed penetrated your womb. This is the insemination, okay? So that's, that's how that's related to the solar eclipse. Again, the spirit of the Lord overshadowed Mary. So we're seeing this all play out in real time. And it's the dart that has the um, gunpowder on the end of it that hit its target. This is the bull's eye. Okay, it hit its target. And Mary, you are now inseminated. You're going to give birth so very quickly. And we'll see that. Okay. So I had um, in the stars then Venus on the 12 minus, on the 6th, <laughs> on the 6th, Venus entered into. Guys, here's Venus. Venus, right here. Venus, okay? She entered into the ram. These are ram's horns because they are trumpets. And what this represents in the sun in the sky is that Venus entered the ram's horns, the trumpets. She entered Jericho. This is your Rahab moment. So we entered Jericho, guys. We were able to, there's a crack in the gates. We entered and we were circling for seven days. The seventh day is when this, again, it's showing again that the levee is going to break. But it right now it is very much cracked, very cracked, and it's ready to crumble is what's going on with the walls of Jericho. Okay, so Venus entering the ram was us entering into Jericho. What we were doing for those days, which you might not have realized, but while the solar eclipse was going on and this entire past week, this was our victory lap. This was our victory lap. We conquered, we have entered the promised land, guys. Okay. Again, all of this is a progressive process. We are already in it. It is here. The day we have waited for is already here. Okay. So all of these signs are representing what's going on and it's comprehensive. I feel like everything I have ever spoken to you about is occurring right now. Okay. Okay. So that was our victory lap. Venus entered the ram. Okay. The marketplace, guys, when you went to the cross, Mercury, this is the cross. This is Jesus at the cross. Okay. And it's our tower moment. It's our tower moment. When Jesus went to the cross, he turned over the tables of the money changers. You know that the crime of Jesus the, the last crime, four days before the Passover, guys. He went to trial and was crucified for what he did in the marketplace. You, he walked into the temple and said, you have made my father's house a den of thieves. He overturned the tables of the money changers. And 
this is what he was actually tried, convicted, and crucified for. It is so huge that you understand this. And we're going to talk all about it, and you're not going to like it, and that is just my duty. <laughs> okay. So in this, you guys, your fortune, your lot, your destiny is changing in this. Okay. This is where everything changes. It's the crux. It's the cross. Okay. This is the turning over of the currency, which is the tide. The whole system now shifts from what was ruling your temple and what will now rule your temple. Completely different. Completely different. This is a huge shift. Okay. So this is where we are sitting now. Now we're going to go back to my last video, the last video I made where I said there are no more words. Okay. This, I didn't realize it at the time when I was giving it to you, you guys, but this is the four corners. This is the cross and all of that. We have another picture of this, and this is where I got the understanding of what is up and coming next week. Now, remember, these, this is a process over several weeks, you guys, not, not too many, but, um, and what I'm seeing for next week, which we are already in the process of, okay? Okay, let me find, oh, by the way, yesterday I went swimming in my pool and I'm swimming in it for uh, 10 minutes before I realize that there is literally a snake in the water. Guys, not only did I have a worm in my apple, I had a snake in my pool. It is literally the representation of wormwood. Wormwood, the comet, bitter waters that poison a third of the waters. It is wormwood that kills the parasite. Thank you, God. All of it, all of it, all of it is showing me that this is ha happening in, in real time. Okay. Okay. The four corners. I have another picture of it. Let me tell you right now that kite picture, guys, kite is a bird of prey. It's another name for a bird of prey. If you look up the words that I say to you, <laughs> you're going to have a better understanding because a lot of it comes through in parables. Okay, so this, you guys, is also uh, my four corners picture, four corners. Okay, this is going to be your garment of praise. You see, when the levee breaks, you take on a garment of praise for mourning and a spirit of joy for heaviness. Um, so your garment of praise is your new covering. And your new covering is Noah's Ark. And it is a very fertile garden. It's a green, beautiful, fertile garden. It's also this picture, which is a picture of the cosmos. If you were to look up the word world in Greek, you would get the word cosmos. The cosmos is filled with so much language. Not that. Okay. An apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, or government. You remember what mother's job is to do is to rearrange you according to your stages of development. She comes in as a trope. 
a trophy wife to put everything in order. And you are being birthed from your new mother. And you are completely, you are not dismembered any longer, where all your limbs were out of shape and you were deformed by the knowledge of good and evil. You are reformed. It's a rebirth. It's a remembering, putting your limbs to your tree back in the correct order, grafted back into the tree of life. Ornament, decoration, adornment, the arrangement of the stars, the heavenly hosts as the ornaments of heaven. The world, the universe, the circle of the earth, the earth. This is all the world word cosmos. Here's your ornament. This is the Christmas tree. You have everything arranged, full fig. Ornaments are coming up. It is you pulling the bubbles from the primordial soup and being able to manifest a new world, a new beginning for yourself. This, this is being shown in the world today by, I think it's Mount Etna is blowing those rings of smoke. These are the bubbles that we have talked about as new wine, which is bubbly champagne. We've also got the red bubbles that pop and burst, okay? Um, there's always two sides to this story. I want us to focus on the glory of it, okay? Okay, the inhabitants of the earth is the cosmos. Men, the human family is the cosmos. Okay, world affairs, the whole circle of earthly goods, endowments, riches, advantages, pleasures. Okay. That is your garment of praise. The four corners, remember, you were cut, you were lashed, you were tanned, your hide was tanned. Um, you were dismembered, you were hung. Um, just like in the video I said about the kites, they called you wicked, they, they discounted you, they discredited you, they said that you were uh, sinner, not following the truth and all of that stuff, guys. But that it's simply not true. It's that we were speaking a different doctrine like Jesus did. And it was astounding and it was astonishing. And everybody, the Pharisees, the birds of prey, called it wicked. Okay. That, that's the story of the kites, the birds of prey. Birds of prey are also called rooks. Birds of prey are kites. Birds of prey are rooks on a chessboard. Rook, 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 rook. This is where you put the rooks in your chessboard. <laughs> For you, it's not birds of prey. It's the phoenix rising. And rook is also called the castle. So we, in our new birth, we become the kings and queens of the castle. It's a fortified city. Fortified city. Fort, it's a fort. It's Paradise Island. Okay. So these uh, rooks, it's your castle, your fortified place. It's a place of safety for you. Safety, completely covered, completely safe, completely sealed. It's also um, the hull of the ship. The hull is your covering. Again, we, we have talked about what the covering means. Um, it's a eucalyptus patch <laughs> and it is for Myrtle. She goes into her chambers. That's her covering. She's being beautified 
in there, prepared, guys, and she comes out as Esther, the star. Okay, this is what happens in the chambers, which we are about to enter into. Okay, you're going to get your new covering. Um, this was a date, you guys. I've had a pro prophecy fulfilled from this picture. And the prophecy was Titanic sinking day, right? And it is a North Korean flag. So we are about to approach another potential. On the 11th, we had the potential for some kind of strike at the clock tower. If it is so, and I believe it is, God repented completely, utterly. He woke up, guys. We woke up and we hit the pause button. We prayed against it at the solar eclipse. We prayed against it. All the world came together in awe and wonder of God's hand. And therefore, that helped to prevent what would have happened to Nineveh. It didn't happen to Nineveh. Okay. Okay. This what this is a potential because this is the south. I know it doesn't look like it, but this isn't my original drawing. I drew this 10 years ago and I really can't remember what it looked like. But I knew if you look at it, guys, there are hints with the red and blue. There's a red and a blue band here also around the earth, the equator, okay? And the four spots in the corners of the South Korean flag. Okay. So on that day, I had been seeing the Titanic sinking day and tax day, which is April 14th and 15th, you guys. Okay. On that day in 2014, there was a ship that went down, horrible disaster, right off the coast of South Korea. Okay, so what this four corners represents for us, I believe, is a date. And the four corners is, again, it's where you are birthed. It's your point of departure. But what you need to do, Titanic, because you are a titan, and all the titans are drowning in Noah's flood. This is the Carpathia coming to rescue you, Titans. Titans, those who are born of Father Sky and Mother Earth. The Carpathia is coming to rescue you. Get into the ark. Titans, get into the ark. Okay, in that, you guys, we've seen fiery darts and the Korean Peninsula. So there could be a potential here for something going on there. But for you, it looks much different. This is your rescue mission. Okay? I, I'd like you to get on the ship. Okay? This is what that represents. So guys, I have four timelines converging. I think it's the four corners. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that now. I'm sorry, it's... Um five timelines. Okay, so you guys are aware that the 411 was the September 11, was the December 21, was the November 11, and the August 3rd. Okay. So... It's, it, look in the corner, guys. It was this picture here. Okay, the fiery dart right here of the centaur, Sagittarius with the bow and arrow. It, it's all of these pictures here. Okay, 
So who it is, it's Superman um, coming, guys. Again, it was the Passover also because God was reviewing your uh, film that looks like this, guys. He's reviewing your film strip. You're standing at the gates, which is um, the gates to heaven, and they cracked open, right? Okay, that's that's what we have so far. Now, upcoming, um, what the day that I'm seeing that's very important is going to be December 25th, because that is the birth, supposedly, of Jesus. That's the birth. So that is Christ being born in you. Again, though, this, this crack is also the opening of the hatch. It's hatching of your eggs, guys. But all your eggs in one basket is Noah's Ark. It's Noah's Ark. So I'm going to talk to you about how to get into Noah's Ark. Um, and I ha I'm going to link some videos below to help you with that. We've already talked about it. Um, but it's probably a little bit hard to hear, but I'm just going to give you scripture to, to tell you how to get into Noah's Ark. Um, what this also is, you guys, is the separation of the wheat and the tares. And the wheat and the tares are a bundle of sticks tied together. A bundle of sticks, sheaths tied together. I'm seeing Joseph's dream right now where he saw all the sheaves of wheat tied together and his brothers were bowing down to him. Okay. We have a picture of that and it's this. Okay. What these are called, um, a bundle of sticks tied together is faggots. They're called faggots. F-A-G-O-T-S, or sometimes you can spell it with two G's. So this is the wheat and the tares being divided, guys. Um, but it's also, Noah's Ark is the place of safety for the animals. And so my duty is to tell you a couple of ways that you have to be done with the beast system. Because if you are still part of the beast system, um, you, the plan for you will be plan B, okay? Which is a beautiful thing. Do not get me wrong. It's a beautiful thing. Also, I believe that this St. Nick here, guys, I don't know if you can see my highlighting or not, but St. Nick at the 25th, which is the 15th, which is, again, Titanic sinking day, but the rescue comes. It's a possibility for North and South Korea, but we're praying against it right now because we see it first, and our duty is to pray against any devastation or judgment, that God would repent of anything there also, okay? Instead, we're going to transmute that energy and turn it into something beautiful. That's what our duty is. We're alchemists and we're supposed to be transmuting the negative energy that other people are calling down. Other people are calling down this negativity. So all over your headlines, anybody who pays attention and delves into this negative worldview, they're growing it. You grow it. If you focus your attention on it, you grow it which is why it was so powerful for every eye in the world almost to be focused on the solar eclipse. That, that, that was the change. It depends what you're focusing on guys. So other people who are paying attention to the war and all of that, um, they are calling down the negativity. They're calling down the judgment and we are praying against it. And now that the tables of the currency have changed, I believe that we can thwart any of these potentials for negativity. We, that is our power, you guys. This is the beauty of Judgment Day. It's the beauty of knowing Christ. It's the beauty of knowing that everybody's innocent. What hath God to judge? There is no judge in that throne because Jesus is the end of the law. 
And so how can anybody be judged? Let, let's pray for the truth. Okay, guys? Okay, so St. Nick is, um, this is when Jesus comes as a thief. This is plan A. And then the plan B, we've already seen. It, um, it's different. I'm not um, sure. I'm not sure what any of this is going to look like. And, and that's the thing. Are these all symbols? Could be. Could it be literal? Could be, guys. Um, but what I see for St. Nick is the Polar Express coming and taking you to Paradise Island. That's what I see for St. Nick, okay? Plan B is, of course, the beautiful seven sisters. It is that feminine beauty of God. Um, it is Jesus who would have gathered you under his wing as a hen gathers her chicks and ye would not. So th that this plan B would be uh, plan B. Okay. Now, both of them contain beautiful blessings. Um, we hope to partake in both plan A and plan B. So I'm going to tell you, now I just told you what April 15th is. It is tax day. It is the tax collector come, you guys. It is pay your dues. How have you been found? In the red, in the black. This is reward. This is the opposite of reward. This is Santa Claus. This is coal or this is diamonds. This is... Um, Yeah, this is lots of lots of good stuff. Titanic, but being rescued, okay? Because you're already in the waters, okay? So rescued, of course, from from whatever potential might come, okay? Um, and your covering is Noah's Ark, and and that is a beautiful place to be, okay? So. Then we have, um, what I see with Noah's Ark, guys, is the beast with seven heads and ten horns coming up out of the ocean. And, and that, too, is a, it's completely opposite of what it sounds like to the unlearned ear. The beast with seven heads and ten horns is Paradise Island coming up out of the ocean. It's our Paradise Island picture, okay? Um, it is a place that is covered. I see it has an invisibility cloak over it, you guys. So I don't know what that means, but it is a wonderful thing. <laughs> That's all I know. It is a wonderful thing. Um, you are the mother of dragons. Have you heard? Thank you, Leo, for sending. Have you heard that they've called um, the comet? The mother of dragons now. What's the comet's name, you guys? <laughs> they have called it the mother of dragons. We have a video called the mother of dragons, ironically, which we made at the end of uh, February. So if you'd like to look that up on your channel, this is you stepping into your power. It, mother of dragons, yeah, the beast with seven heads and ten horns is given power by the dragon. You are Medusa. You control the fiery flying serpents. You control the seraphim. The seraphim are the princes and the nobles that surround the throne of God continually. It is you. It's you. Why do you control the serpent? Because you conquered him. Because you conquered him. You com conquered Wormwood. You conquered uh, the poison serpent. It, it's you. So now you can control those things. Okay. That this is your, the spirit is saying morning star. This is your morning star. This is your gift. Okay. Okay. So that's what I see for plan A, St. Nick right here. Nick is our code word. <laughs> and I received it twice yesterday. And all we had to do was wait for the word niche. Okay, if you'd like to go review that language, 
you'll have a better understanding, okay? Plan B, this, what these dates are, you guys, this is April 21st and 22nd. We have that picture represented in the menorah, the oil lamp. Right here. Right here, guys, look in the, at the corner. It's this, it's the menorah. Okay. Um, it's the beast with seven heads and 10 horns coming up. It is your oil of joy. It is your oil of anointing. That is what's represented in the green colors, guys, in the green. Okay. That's plan B, which is also a be very beautiful thing. Um, what the dates represent here, um, September 21st of 2022 was Elul 25. El Elul 25, you guys, is the day on the Hebrew calendar that creation was made. So this is our plan B. Again, it's starting over from Genesis 1-1. Okay. Um, December 1st is when we went into the entrance, 2022, we went into the entrance. Uh, again, where these here, the 25th, you're coming out the entrance. You're coming out of that hall. Here, you're going in. You're entering the birth canal. Okay. November 21st and 22nd. And I had something for that date, and now I don't remember it. And then August 13th and 14th, I wasn't with you, you guys. August 13th and 14th in the green. Um, this is when M Venus received her morning star. August 13th and 14th of 2023, Venus went and joined with the sun during her retrograde, and she received her morning star. Um, so this is the kiss at Times Square. Also, um, war is over. So lots of good stuff coming up. Um, again, you, you can't tell how this is going to look until it's hindsight. I do believe that these days are very important. And then, guys, here at the end of the calendar, the very last square on the calendar, I have 1, 1 slash 2, 12, 1, and 23. Um, these are important, too. And I'm not going to look too far ahead because I can't see, but they are all lit up, meaning they all had meanings um, to me. And that's why I highlighted them. They were very important days in the past. And that's why I highlighted them. So this would be May 1st, not April 1st. May 1st is the top corner right here, guys. Okay, May 1st. October 2nd, we had an X-Class solar flare on that day. December 12th, uh, half loop. Um, this was December 1st. And this was August 23rd, which is our Sunflower Day. Um, sunflower Day. Again, I wasn't with you on YouTube, guys, but I have an understanding myself of what that is. It is when it's on my calendar, though I have not shown it to you yet. Okay, I'm gonna show you the old calendar for sake of time here. It's when um, the sun, this is the sun, passes between the lion's gate, which is right here, and Virgo's gate. That's our sunflower date, and that's August 23rd at the end of the calendar. So I'm not sure what that looks like yet. It is when the sun passes from Leo into Virgo. Okay, that's an important date also. From Leo into Virgo, the sun passes. That's the 23rd of August, that bottom corner, okay? 
Okay, let me stop sharing my screen here. Okay, continuing on, guys. Um, what we're getting into, guys, is Noah's Ark, okay? This is Ark. This is Noah's Ark. It's his rainbow covenant, okay? Um, and where we're moving, guys, is from the muted, where we were silent, where we were confused speech, confused language, babble, where we were mute beast. The word beast in um, Hebrew literally means mute, okay? That's why I have it here. We were mute. We are now moving to sound. It, this is the changeover here, guys, to the age of Aquarius. And what it is, it's Memorial Day. What it is, is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's Jacob's join. Jacob's join is a potluck dinner. A potluck dinner. Jacob's join, it's when he wrestled with God. Okay, guys? A uh, potluck dinner. It's what do you have in your pot? And this is this is just, it's going to be huge. Um, and I hope you can hear it. I'm going to take you to scripture because, because it's in there. It's just hidden. And it's new information. And I, I really want you to see it, okay? Um, first, I want to talk to you about the bundle of sticks. If you are coming out of the beast system, you must understand that you had to come out of the idea that there's something wrong with um, other people. <laughs> you had to understand that everybody's innocent, that John 1, 9 states that everybody who is born is born with the light of Christ. Every man who comes into the world has the true light of Christ within him. It's not just you. You're not a selected group. Um, you have to understand that God created a bunch of diverse, unique, beautiful flowers in this garden. And that includes the rainbow group, the bundle of sticks, who you have dismissed, possibly, as evil or sinful or because they're not like you you have mislabeled them and you have to understand that every human being is made in the image of god it doesn't matter what we do carnally it doesn't matter what we do on the outside it doesn't matter what you think is sinful it is that sin is not imputed because the lamb washed away the sins of the world and meaning that it was a false concept altogether, that anybody that might be a, of a different gender, of a different sexual orientation, of a different uh, political view, of a different, um, there's a word coming to me, creed. Thank you, spirit. Of a different creed, any kind, it is lesser than you. Um, boy, how those people that you think are wicked are about to shine because what faggots are, are they, they are fireworks. And this is a celebration of uh, the rainbow covenant. Okay. So that's number one. <laughs> number two, to partake in the beast system, it, it really it is to put your faith into government leaders. That's part of the beast system uh hands down it, it what god has taught us is that you are a sovereign being and you are to be the ruler of your own temple you are to be the king and the queen you are to sit in the throne yourself and so putting your faith in any kind of political movement or political system it, it just doesn't hold water it's not an ark it just doesn't hold water and um, the that's so much part of the beast system. The whole world is involved in a politics. The whole world is involved in judging government law, judging. The whole world is involved in prejudice. And, and those are things that we were supposed to step out of, okay? 
come away from completely and utterly and to find absolute and complete love in your heart, okay? It, you might have a hard time stepping onto the ark if, if these concepts aren't clear. Um, the, but the one that I must tell you about, because it is my duty from here forward, which I did not know until uh, March 24th, I did not know what my purpose really was, guys. But now I do see what that is. And this one, it's a, it's a hard one to explain to you, but I'm going to show you scripture and it's absolutely astounding and it's new and it, it really is something that I believe in wholeheartedly. So here we go. If you want to move from the beast system, which is mute, which means that God did not hear your 911 call. If God did not hear your 911 call, I'm going to help you. I'm helping you right now to understand how you can get your sound back, how you can get your voice back, and how God will hear your cries. Okay? It's the sound of silence. This is so profound. And this is why for the last 24 hours, I did not speak because the sound of silence is the sound of peace. What does sound mean in Hebrew, guys? It means shalom, peace. It is the sound of Solomon. It is the sound of peace in your heart. The only way to have peace in your heart is to love. And it is not a human love. And it so far supersedes anything that is earthly. It is such a a burden off your shoulders when you get rid of prejudice, judgment, law, legal systems in yourself. For you to be able to say everybody is declared innocent by the blood of the lamb who was slain from the foundation, for you to completely understand that, is the key to get you into the ark, okay? So I am going to show you some things that, are in scripture. First, for my friends out there in the rainbow world, what's happening in the sky, I told you all of this is being told in the sky, guys. Mercury and Venus are having a conjunction. You want both the morning star of Mercury and you want the morning star of Venus, guys. And what they are in Greek mythology is Hermes and Aphrodite. And when you put, her, they're having a conjunction, Hermes and Aphrodite, Mercury and Venus are having a conjunction in the sky. When you put the two of them together, you get the hermaphrodite. And what the hermaphrodite is, is a person who has a perfect balance of the masculine, meaning the lower aspect of the masculine has been healed. And you have a perfect understanding of your masculine energy and the feminine, where you have healed what they call the whore and all of that, right? And what do we call the masculine? We call him the hunter the lower aspect of the hunter, man, first man, Adam, mute Adam. What does mute mean? Guys, it means dumb. Okay. First man, Adam was dumb. He was a hunter. He was a fool. You have healed that part of you. Then there's the lower aspects of the woman who they call the whore and what her higher aspects are, are the nur nurturer, uh, the honey. Okay. When you join those together, you get the hermaphrodite. It is a person who produces fruit, multiplies himself by himself, sovereignty. 
multiplies himself, right? Both sex organs, guys. And there are plants that do this. I think there are also animals that do this. They have both the sex organs and they are all able to multiply themselves, be multiplied, be fruitful and multiply in sovereignty. This means that you have joined with the correct husband. Remember what the word husband means. Husbandry. Husbandry is the one who cares for the animals. The, the husbandry is literally taking care of animals. Okay. Which husband did you join with? Did you join with the husband who lays down his life, the good shepherd, who lays down his life for the sheep? Or did you join with the husband who is out hunting the sheep? Okay, you're going to find out. Okay, so the idea here is there's no more lust of the flesh. When you are able to reproduce by yourself, it just means that you have given up the lust of the flesh. Um, you are perfectly balanced. Okay, and this is, this is what we're looking for here. Um, part of the beast system though, if you still have lust of the flesh, that's part of the beast system. There's many, many ways to have lust of the flesh guys. Um, but my duty is to tell you about one that is not maybe so obvious, but it, I believe it is completely real. Okay. So we're trying to get rid of the beast system. It's the golden calf system. And we're trying to come out of this world. Beast system, you had to come out of her, my people. And this is how you're going to get on the ark, okay? So we have the story of the hunters versus the, the it's the carnivores, you guys, versus the garden feeders. It's the hunters, the carnivores, versus the herb eaters. And I am talking about your diet. And what I discovered is astounding. So I, I want you to stick with me here. We're going to go to uh, numbers six. Okay. So there is a vow here in number six, you guys speak unto the children of Israel, whether either man or woman shall separate themselves to a vow, a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord. We took that vow, you guys, part of our oath, our covenant with death was to separate ourselves unto God, to come out of this world, be separate from it. And it, this is something that we were supposed to do, I believe, because we were going to follow Jesus. Guys, we, we made an sworn oath to follow Jesus. And it turns out that Jesus, right here, guys, he shall be called a Nazarene. And a Nazarene is a Nazarite, one who is separated. So the Nazarite vow is very important to me. And I didn't know I had made it, but I did it by the leading of the spirit. So if you wanted to be separated unto the Lord, um, there was a vow to be made if you wanted to follow Jesus and it's a Nazarite vow. Now scripture tells you, he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. The prophets prophesied that Jesus would be called a Nazarene, a Nazarite. Guys, what I discovered is that the city of Nazareth wasn't even founded until 200 AD. Jesus was not called a Nazarene because he came out of Nazareth. And this is the first time in my entire life that I am going to tell you that the scripture lied to you. The men who put this book together 
put this in here because they wanted to hide the truth of the Nazarene. If Nazareth actually wasn't founded until 200 AD, Jesus could not have come out of the city called Nazareth. What Jesus was, was a Nazarene. This is what my spirit has led me to, and I believe this wholeheartedly, okay? Okay, so I'm going to tell you there are other Nazarenes in the Bible. There are other Nazarites, and it's hidden. It is hidden in Scripture. So in order to be a Nazarite, you shall separate himself from wine and strong drink. He shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Now you're going to say, well, Jesus drank wine at the Last Supper. If you go look at da Vinci's depiction of the Last Supper, there are no cups on the table. Um, I don't believe that Jesus was drinking wine at the Last Supper. When he was given the sop of vinegar in the sponge, they dipped the sponge in vinegar, you guys. In the book of Luke, which is our book, remember, he did not drink it. Okay. Um, vinegar, strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree. The vine tree, you guys, right here, is the grape. If you go look at the language, it's the grape vine. From the kernels, even unto the husk. All the days of the vow, his separation, there shall come no razor upon his head until the days be fulfilled and shall let the locks of his hair and head grow. Okay. All the days that he separates himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall come at no dead body. When you look at this, you see that it's no dead creature. If he can't come at a dead creature, he literally cannot eat one. If he can't come at a dead body, you guys, appetite. He shall come at no dead creature, appetite. What is being said here? This was a vow of Samson, you guys. Um, they were not to drink meat or, I'm sorry, wine, and they were not to eat meat. Daniel 1, not 6, Daniel must have been a Nazarite. So Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine. Do you see here that Daniel had taken the Nazarite vow? He would eat no meat and he would not drink the wine. Therefore, he requ requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And the eunuch, remember the eunuch is the one who's the hermaphrodite, you guys. He's the only one who is trusted to watch over the fair maidens, the innocent children, and the innocent animals of the earth. The eunuch. Okay, perfect balance. Uh, the, it's the eunuch that watches over the, the maidens uh, of Esther, also Myrtle, okay? The prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, um, if you don't eat the meat and drink the wine, the, the, uh, the king's going to be mad at me. Daniel said to the eunuch, prove me, prove me. I beseech you 10 days and let them give us Pulse to eat and water to drink. Pulse is vegetables, you guys. It includes legumes, uh, lentils, beans, I believe grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds of the garden. So Daniel says, give us pulse and water and see, see how we fare. Let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat. And so the eunuch said, okay. And at the end of 10 days, they appeared fairer. Now, if, if you know the word fairer, you, we'll talk about it. And fatter in flesh than all the children, meaning they were much healthier. Their skin was glowing. They were much healthier than the people that ate the meat and the wine from the king's table. 
There are other uh, Nazarites, I believe, in the Bible, and I'm going to show them to you, and you're going to be astonished. Remember, you guys, at the cross, the firstborn dies. Well, we have firstborn hunters and firstborn vegetable eaters all over the Bible. It's not firstborn, secondborn. Vegetable eaters all over the Bible, which it's hidden in language. So first, we have the most obvious one, um, Esau, who is a perfect depiction of the firstborn. It is um, the animalistic first man, Adam. It is the brute beast who wants to take the kingdom by violence, uh, slaughtering, um, harming, and he is usurped, of course, by uh, Jacob. So Esau was a cunner, cunning, guys, cunning. um, It's the foolish behavior of Esau, and he was a hunter. We have talked so many times about the hunter and the carnivore and the first man, Adam. Again, he is a partaker of the beast system, you guys. He hunts meat. It's the beast system. And this makes him mute. It makes him die. It's the firstborn dies at the Passover. Okay. And then who rises up is Jacob. So Esau died, I hope you guys, at the cross. We, we've talked about this a million times. It's the man with a crown of thorns, meaning his, he's dumb. The wheels won't turn because it's barbed wire fence. His mind is imprisoned. This is the foolishness, the muteness of the beast system, okay? First man, Adam. Um, But Jacob, of course, what was Jacob eating? Of course, you understand that Jacob was eating a pottage of lentils, This is what Jacob was preparing for himself. Esau sold his birthright for his appetite. Esau sold his birthright for his appetite. We have another example of this. Perez came out first, but his brother Zerah is the one who's going to get the blessing. Perez dies at the cross and Zerah, let's look at Zerah first, okay? Zerah, of course, is Lazarus, you guys. Lazarus, Zerah. The two twins of Tamar. What does Tamar mean? Palm tree. (laughs) Do I have to show you? No, I know I don't. The twins of Tamar. Tamar is palm tree. Tamar is city of palms, garden of Eden, tree of life, tree of knowledge. Which one? Okay, of course, palm tree, guys. Tamar's twins, Zara and Perez. Zara, you guys, rising. Now, Zara's going to rise because he's got a pulse, just like Daniel was eating pulse. Sarah's going to rise because a pulse is found in him. Pulse. Vegetables. Vegetables. Garden eaters. Okay? Rising. And there's the idea of sowing under here. Sowing seeds. See if I can find that for you. Dawning, shining. These are the early risers. Okay? There's another word. um, Zara, that means seeds, sown, sowing seeds. Okay. But there's another word here, Zara. And this is where my understanding came from. Zara, guys, it, it's 
related word, same word, same root, zaroa. Zaroa, vegetables, pulse. Lazarus, Zara, gets to rise. Lazarus is the same name as Zara, gets to rise because he has a pulse. He was eating vegetables, okay? And God told us in the garden what we are to be eating. God said, behold, I have given you all the people that he just made up here. God created man in his own image. I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. Our food was to be from the garden. Perez, on the other hand, Perez, his brother, his brother was called Perez. And what it is, guys, is the breach. The breach is the place between the beast system and the Solomon system. Between the beast and the peace is the breach. Jesus is the repairer of the breach. Okay, what does breach mean? Slaughter. Can you see my mouse, guys? Can I highlight it for you right here? No, it doesn't show. Slaughter. 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 Uh, Perez was a slaughterer. Slaughterer. Okay, slaughter who? Uh, I'm going to show you who. So the very crime that uh, Jesus went to the cross for was to turn over the tables of the money changers, guys. But what was he actually doing in the temple? F Jesus found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he made a scourge of small cords, he drove out the animals from the temple. He drove out the animals from the temple, the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables. What does money mean? Let me give you some words, okay, guys? The word fee, as in a charge, money, fee, it means cattle and flock. What does the word pecuniary mean? It means wealth. It means money. And what it means is cattle and sheep, pecuniary. What does the word capital mean? As in your assets, your money, your capital. It means head of live stock. The absolute idea of currency comes from the idea of the exchange of animals. This is how your wealth was measured in Jesus's day. You took your animals to the temple for sacrifice. You took your animals to the temple for sacrifice. And Jesus said, you, it, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. What does den mean at its root? Den, it means lair, which is an animal's house. A den of thieves, a den of thieves, animal house. So I watched a documentary on uh, March 24th, you guys. And in that documentary, the interviewers went to this well-learned, well-respected, prestigious um, professor at some prestigious college, okay? And they asked the woman, we're asking about this verse, the den of thieves. And she says, a den of robbers. I'm familiar with it. and. The interviewers were like, okay, well, tell us about it. And she went and she got out her book. 
and she looked it up, den of thieves. She's looking at this verse, you guys, den of thieves. She says, oh, this is an aha moment for me. She puts the book down. She gets out another book. So she's cross-referencing something. She's looking at the language. She's looking at the verse. She closes that book. And she goes and she gets a third book. And she opens it up. And she says, this word, thieves, this word thieves is parites. What she was explaining to the interviewers is what this scripture in Greek and what this scripture in English would have looked like if it was written in Hebrew. Parites, she says. Parites. Parites. You have made my father's house an animal house of parites. Here it is, guys. Parites. Look at the word carefully. <laughs> Breach. But if you capitalize parites, what do you get? Capitalize parites. It's Perez. You have made my father's house an animal house of slaughter. Jesus was not going to stand for the animal sacrifice any longer. And this is because he was Jesus the Nazarene. He's also Noah. You shall be their comfort. You shall be their comfort, the Holy Spirit comforter. Noah was to comfort the animals. God saved the animals. And this is why Jesus went to the cross for saving the animals. You see, when you come out of the animal sacrifice system, you change everything. You change the culture. You change traditions. You change the holiday feasts. You change what you do in your daily life because you can't go to restaurants. You can't participate in the world when you truly can't come out of the eating system of human beings. You truly have to separate yourself when you don't eat and when you don't drink like they do. Can't go to the parties the same any longer. Can't go to the holidays any longer. Can't go to the restaurants. Can't order out. You can't participate in the traditions because our food system is so deeply interwoven with our being. Isaiah. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lay down with the kid. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. This is because as you remove yourself from the beast system, the animals are also going to be healed and they're going to eat what they were supposed to eat to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth 
I have given every green herb for meat. The lion will eat straw like the ox. And this is because everybody's coming out of the carnivore hunter system. They shall do no harm in all of my holy mountain. But still, we cry. Still, we cry. Still, we cry. All the mixed multitude that was among them felt a lusting. And the children of Israel wept again. Who shall give us flesh to eat? You see, they were given manna from heaven, but it wasn't good enough for them. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. But our soul is dried away. There is nothing besides this manna before our eyes. The manna, by the way, is the gold. It is the electrum. It is the amber that gets you across the bridge. It's bread. Moses heard the people weeping. Whence should I have flesh to give this people? Moses says to God, for they weep to me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Give us flesh that we may eat. The Lord said to Moses, Gather me seventy men. I will come down and talk with you and say unto the people, So, therefore, I will give you flesh, and you shall eat. Not one day, not two, not five, not ten, or not twenty days, but a whole month. It shall be come out of your nostrils and it shall be loathsome to you because you have despised the Lord who went before you. And while the flesh was air between their teeth, the quails came and while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague of muteness. Babel, confused speech. God does not understand the language. And he called the name of it this, because they buried the people that lusted after the flesh. Let's look at this name. Graves of Lust. So, Isaiah 66. Is the final scripture I was given for this. He that kills an ox as if he slew a man, he that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck, he that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood, he that burns incense, I will choose their delusions and I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. They did evil before my eyes. He shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? There are many other ways to have lust of the flesh, you guys. I just believe that it was my duty as an unknowing Nazarene for 
many years now um, that I was supposed to bring this to you. The kingdom is not taken by violence any longer. None of it shall stand. They shall not harm in all my holy mountain. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Lays down his life for the sheep. He went to be the substitute sacrifice for the sheep. It's Noah's ark. Guys, he didn't do it for you. As you know, you had to do this yourself. You had to go into hell. You had to follow Jesus into the cup of baptism. Follow me, follow me, follow me. He went and slayed the enemy, overcame him, and rose again. If you want the firstborn blessing, you must do what he did. What Jesus did was did it for the ones who couldn't do it themselves. For the innocent children, the innocent maidens, the innocent beasts of the earth. Not the ones who know not the ones who were supposed to have an intellect for it, not the ones who were supposed to become wise as the serpent, but the ones who had no way to speak for themselves. Okay, so I, I believe that this is very, very, a very important part of the journey. And it, it may be so that it's not that important um, but there's no doubt in my mind, God is my witness, Jesus as my witness. Jesus was a Nazarite. No doubt in my mind. Where we are going, there will be no lust of the flesh. There will be no killing. Even the animals will no longer be carnivorous, as ordained in the garden. Jacob takes Esau's birthright. Zerah takes Perez's birthright. The thing that put a huge breach between mankind and God was the sacrifice of animals, God's pets, Noah's ark, drowned everybody else and saved the animals. This is so important, you guys. Jesus is the repair of the breach. He went to the slaughter for them. You know, under the temple at Jerusalem, there are drainage systems that a man can walk through for the blood that ran through that temple, especially on feast days. Horrific. You ever seen the movie Apocalypto? Yeah, like that. Horrific. You have made my father's house a den of thieves. Um, we, as human beings, have made Mother Earth a den of thieves. An animal house of slaughter. We slaughter over 60 billion land animals, four-legged creatures, a year for our appetites. We sold our birthright for our appetite. That doesn't even include the fowl and the fish. 60 billion, the most inefficient, horrific industry on Mother Earth. Okay, my duty is done. We are going into our chambers for a little moment while the indignation be overpassed. The indignation, it is a wellspring for you.
Out of your belly shall come living waters. You are going to Paradise Island. You are going to Noah's Ark. Okay, so this is what the next represent the next week represents. Again, this is a process, you guys. It is not too late to make some changes. Think about it, but really, truly, don't think about it. Pray on it. Because if my spirit led me here unknowingly this whole time, as you know, vegetarian since age 15, vegan for the past 10 years, your spirit should lead you there, guys. Okay? I love you. I will see you in the next one.